Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scenes tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your host, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Welcome to another edition of Inside the Firm. I am your host, Alex Gore. I'm here with a special guest who's with us every time, and that's why he's so special. Lance Bison Psycho. Yes, middle name Bison. How's it going? It's going pretty good, Mr. Gore. Everything's going pretty pretty good, even though there's some, you know, the bad news in the uh, in the media, which we'll get into later. Okay. Well, we want to know what good news is. What's the good news? You can get on a rocket ship, and you don't have to wait for Elon. Really? He takes too long. Wow. Blows things up. Yep. Oh, also too. <laughs> things. Uh, we won't even go into it. We won't even go into it. <laughs> uh, there's another another rocket ship. It's called Revit rocket ship. Ah called taking a ride with your Revit skills, being more productive, more efficient, using our systems, templates, and everything that we've honed over years to make you more productive, that makes you more money, that makes you more happy. Go check it out, revitrocketship.com. Try it for a month, you don't like it, money back guaranteed. Yeah, check that out. You also need to check out ArtCat, as more businesses and tenants demand green design in their buildings, LEED certification is more important than ever, and while ArtCat is known for being red, they can help you go green. ArtCat provides thousands of LEED reports from building product manufacturers on how their products can help make the green choice that's right for you. Head over to arcat.com and find the information you need for lead. That's A-R-C-A-T dot com. I also want you to check out Pillow Luxury because you've never experienced a brand like this before, Mr. Al Gore and everyone else. The collection of brands within the luxury division of Pella are the conversation starters, the pioneers of industry who provide window and door solutions to discerning architects, the building industry, and beyond. They have decades of experience creating things no one else in the world is creating. And the collection of brands are brought together to complement and build on one another. They don't push beyond the limits. They set them. Explore PellaLuxury.com forward slash the firm. That's PellaLuxury.com forward slash the firm today. Back to you, Gore. Okay. So uh, I just have some advice and then want to peg you on this. If someone asked me these questions during an interview, I think it would almost skyrocket them to the top of the list. Whoa. So they'd get on a rocket ship, but not Revit rocket ship. But still, they'd get on a rocket ship. They would because then they join us, and then they have to take Revit rocket ship. Damn, rocket to rocket. <clears throat> um, everyone should know by now if you're having an interview, either coming out of college or transitioning in a job, that you should have some questions for the firm, um, and it honestly makes a difference. And being on the other side, on the hiring side, I can tell a difference. You probably can too. Between a generic firm, a generic question versus like a pointed question, you know? And I don't have examples of those, but like those you should have in your pocket because after the interview and a bunch of questions by whoever you're getting hired from, they should ask, do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. And normally it's, oh no, I think everything was covered. Yeah. Like, I don't know why it feels, it kind of just feels like, did you not do your homework? Do you, you really don't have any questions whatsoever. Um, so would you agree that asking questions? A hundred percent. Brings me right up. I just want to see, you know, that's one of the things, and this probably comes from me having children and you too, is that uh, what, you, what you want in people that you're trying to help grow, you're fostering their growth. That's what you are as an employer. I'm not suggesting they're your children, but there is like an analogy here or like a similarity in it. And like, you, I want to see some curiosity because if I don't see any curiosity, then how are you ever going to get self-automated, self automated self you know, you're going to be able to look for things on your own and investigate. I need yep. you to do that. Yep. And then the other thing I want is I think to be successful, you need to be engaged in the team, in the culture, in the firm. So if you don't have any questions about that, are you even going to be like, are you going to be the right fit? You know? Um, but here's some questions that, that I think would help. And it's kind of in a two part thing. So the first two questions come together. Uh, the question would be, who is your most productive employee and how did they get there? Interesting. Because that makes them think about who it is and what they've done. Or I like this one. You could put a twist on it. Sorry. To, yeah. 
who is your most valuable employee? How do they get there? I mean, you could just keep, what I'm getting at is like, this is such a good setup and yep. and not punchline, but conclusion of the question. Yep. You just think of, if you're listening and you're a potential employee for anybody, think about how you could reuse that. Yep. And, and because it's going to make you, Lance, think like, oh, okay. Because it might change over time. It might change based on roles like, oh, you're going to be in this role. This person's in this role. So in that zone this is the most important person anyways there'll be a whole conversation about that then this follow-up question i think is the key uh if hired can i sit next to them so good i mean it would just blow my mind well yeah i'm gonna give a shout out to uh rebecca uh who works at f9 and that was one of her pieces of advice to new employees was she she found that in sitting next to one of our most productive and valuable employees for over a year leveled her up she got on she got on a little rocket ship yep and for architecture firms too this is going back to something lance and i have harped on maybe too much this is why we value in person yeah because because if if you ask that first question who's the most productive and how do they get there and then you ask can you sit next to them and they go oh it'll actually be a remote but you can ping them anytime Oh, so the most productive, most valuable person in the firm, I'm just going to bother them all the time with, with questions, uh, you know, like via over the internet versus literally just sitting next to them and say, Hey, can you look at this and tell me what to do? Well, then, then there's, <laughs> but then there's also, again, the, the permeability and, uh, so it's sort of this like in real time osmosis that happens. You're in this soup of people talking, soup of people working on projects to solving problems you're listening to the conversations they're having with either me or al or another coworker, and that knowledge can come through that way too mm-hmm. is it like how are you gonna how are you gonna recreate that you both can be on is everybody gonna be on zoom at once terrible. all the time terrible yeah terrible well that's what i have i thought the three questions oh i see you kind of put a comma productive... and how did they get there yeah i like that Okay, moving on to a little bit of uh, news here. As everybody probably heard yesterday, hopefully, so we're recording this on uh, July 29th, 2022, July 28th, 2022, uh, so Thursday of this week, it came out that we had a two consecutive quarters of negative growth, which means by definition, no matter who's trying to change the definition, <laughs> that is a recession, um, just by the definition alone. But like I was talking about, I think it was last episode of the episode before, if you are into economics and you, especially if you're a business owner and you pay attention, I think you're recognizing what, hopefully, what I was preaching on about last last episode. That yes, by definition, we're in a recession, but there are a lot of silver linings here, and it's not it's a totally unique one because we have this high rate of inflation, and then we also have a very low rate of unemployment, especially in Colorado. So uh, I have an article up here from Denver 7 that was uh, seven. It was last week is when when it actually went up. Um, It was like after we recorded. But the headline is we've never had a situation like this making sense of economic trends. Mm. And uh, we have so from the article, we have a lot of headlines flying at us about the economy, often, often seemingly at odds with each other. To my point, Friday, the state of Colorado reported very strong job numbers with the unemployment rate falling. To three point four percent, and you can't ask for more than the better than three percent typically. Right, exactly. Uh, just because there's folks uh, like your hand, like that can't work or in between, jobs. in between, yep, all that stuff. It, it's actually by a lot of economists considered pretty much zero. Yep, yep. Um, so a number that low would normally would leave economists feeling optimistic about the economic prospects. On the other hand, the jobs report is released with the backdrop of high inflation. And the Federal Reserve raising interest rates to help control it, which they did on Wednesday then of this week by 0.75 points, right? Three quarters of a point. Uh, signals that would normally warn economists of an impending recession. Well, then the recession came out. So um, just watch your bottom line is is the big thing going on here, right? Where, where your revenue streams are headed. Diversify. We talk about that a lot. And try to be as lean as possible as we wade through this. And then... Um, you know, I, 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 so, uh, so I think I'm cautiously optimistic now. Yep. Okay. I like that. Where, where do you, how do you square this? I I've seen a trend on a graph for a long time and it is productivity and it's normally in relationship to uh, wage growth. 
And every year, oh, productivity goes up, productivity goes up. And wage growth like barely goes up, mm-hmm. except for the past couple of years, which is great, actually. Yeah. If when the next graph comes out, who knows, if at 2020, literally till now, that productivity doesn't take a sharp decline, like, I don't know if they're being honest. Yeah, sure. Maybe they're... Well, maybe. just think about like... Okay, you can't get supplies, which means your labor can't do what they need to do. So both of those are like manufacturing and the creation of things are way down. Yeah. Um, tech, you you could say pro like that. That's so hard to like. Oh, we sold this many Zoom things versus other Zoom things. Like, oh, but it was already automatic anyway, so it didn't really. You know what I mean? Like you just sign up for Zoom. Yeah. 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 Um. So that that's that's. That's kind of like squaring the circle or whatever that phrase is. Low unemployment, Mm -hmm. whole bunch of money. Mm -hmm. So some people would be like, oh, where's the recession? The recession is in the productivity. What you can get for that money, what you can get for all these things. Yeah. And especially like, oh, okay, we're spending a whole bunch of money. So like that means not a recession. Yeah, yeah. But what are we getting for that? Are we getting the same house at twice the price? Exactly. Yeah. It's a stagflation. Yeah problem exactly so the the metric you really want to watch for and this is the last thing i'll say about this article is quote consumer spending is the most important part of our economy because it does does account for 70 percent of u.s gdp silver explained if consumers start to pull back and start to tighten their belts because they fear a recession or they fear that they're already in one personally they're going to then you're going to see businesses start to rein in spending as well which would mean less hiring which would mean less expansion and that could really accelerate the recession so consumers already are here's the problem i i have less memberships i have less things i'm spending on my money i go to the restaurant less i spend just as much or more because of inflation yeah so it's like it's weird because if you're just looking at numbers like oh numbers are still good like oh no i have to spend that to i have kids gotta buy food yeah i'm still spending the same amount i'm just not going out to eat and doing crazy stuff like that right crazy stuff he says crazy (laughs) i got something crazy for you i am not going to name who this is uh outright but there was an architect that i saw post this in a forum this week and it triggered me to no end and i don't know if it'll trigger al but maybe it'll trigger you guys listening out there quote quickest way for architects to become valuable is to have an architect stamp every project permitted for construction period so I really like this architect. <laughs> Honestly, I do. He's a great person, great design. Uh, if this is not a troll thing, I don't know. I don't know if he's thinking it through or, or, or whatever. Like that. That's the quickest way to cronyism. That's like the it's quickest, literal cronyism. Yeah. Why is it cronyism? Uh, the quickest way for doctors because to become valuable is the word. No, no, no that's not more valuable. It's to make more money. The quickest way to make more money I, I, is to have the government say everyone has to come the, through us. The quickest way, here's the right phrase of oh. this, what this really means is, the quickest way for architects to secure and monopolize their services yep. on the general public is to have an architect stamp every project permitted for construction, including small decks. Yep. The, uh, the quickest way for uh, elevator operators to be valuable is to have every elevated elevator operated by an elevator operator. Like that doesn't solve. That doesn't. That's not adding any value. That's not solving anything. It, that's why the value is the is the is the yeah. wrong word. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. 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 Uh, <laughs> if you you can't ask you can't be an advocate for affordable housing, uh, trying to help the middle class, and being an advocate for uh, all of those things, and at the same time demand more of a monopoly on the whole process vis-a-vis licensure like it just doesn't make any sense at all yep and and there's there's and again so like when al, al makes always his point like he grew up in a basically a spec house right like a a, a yes. build, builder's level house yes yeah and uh and then over time the the it, all these like suburban sprawl neighborhoods over time the trees grow up people change siding it all of a sudden looks super americana and like lovely right yep all of those houses, the majority of the houses, I shouldn't use it. Uh, most of those houses probably drawn up by like a draftsman and then just repeated. And then they had them engineered so the building doesn't fall down and go boom. What's the issue? Well, what's the issue here? Yeah. 
also too, they're they're honestly like you. I think people think that they can, you know, like if they regulate this, like that that will be part of the solution. But the problem is like, oh oh, and and here's the other thought: like, oh, we're always competing against architects. Architects are undermining architects, yeah. right? So, for example, uh, let's just say something. Well, okay, but I'm going to put that devil's I got just real quick. Keep your hold here, for example. Builders are out competing architects. Real realtors, like, like it's bigger than that. Yep. Okay. Well, and you want to know why that's true? Okay. Yeah. Because if you had the opposite, if you had what's being suggested here, think about a shed that you buy, and let's say that shed is not over 120 square foot, and you want to put it in your backyard, right? Yeah. <clears throat> All of a sudden, you need drawings of like where it's going to be, uh, where you're going to place it, maybe a foundation design, you know, maybe not. Maybe, you don't necessarily, let's just say no foundation design for this literal shed. All that has to go through the permit process. So now an architect needs to do it. I don't have the time or w- to, to do those types of projects. Yeah. What, if, what a weird assumption to think like architects want that work. Okay. I mean, okay. Yep. And, and then all of a sudden, that's why it becomes... Hey, architects, if you aren't adding value, we're going to take this off of the list of your responsibilities. A drafter can do that. A homeowner can do that. A, you know, a builder can, can, can do that and draw that up because you're asking for things that aren't, aren't necessary. And, and here, here's the example. I'll give you the example for the extreme because sometimes when you look at an extreme, you can see the flaw in it. Sure. Right. Okay. Boulder, Boulder County. Wonderful County. Just talk the greatest it. old open space known to man. Uh, this person is going to do possibly a resort with multiple cabins, multiple buildings, greenhouses. Wow. Barns, I don't even know about this project. Look at this guy. All of that. Yeah. Walk through the whole process. Obviously it's going to take over a year. Oh, minimum. And planning commission and city council or county council. Oh <laughs> man. Wonderful. Right. Yep. You can imagine. I'm and getting, is, I'm getting real happy thinking about it. This is only for the concept phase for them to approve it. Right? Okay. So you have to think all that money. Yeah. So then we asked, hey, if we go this route or if we just build a house on here, which uh-huh. we know we're allowed to do, right? We know that we have to go through the house process, right? And stick with the rules. <clears throat> Regardless of each one of those, yeah. we, need to, uh, we need to make the drive through the property that we're talking about on private property uh, up to code, no matter what. Like, no matter what we do, there needs to be a driveway to said house or said huge resort, right? Is there any way we could side permit that road that's going to be there regardless separately so that we could get started next spring? So literally eight months from now, yeah, nine, ten. Yeah. And they said, we advise against that because um, basically over the year, 12 to 18 months process for this resort, that other process of a road might only shed one or two months off of that. Oh, okay. So think about this, Lance. Instead of, here's my big point. Like we have to do uh, surveys, wildlife, all, all these plans for this resort. <clears throat> for a road, we can't do, oh, here's an engineering grading plan that shows the road, the cut and fill and all that. Can you have an engineer and maybe a forest person look at that and then approve it? Yeah. No, no, no. Got to be concurrent. No, no, no. But like you have to go through all these, these hoops unnecessary. Like the, it, it, so, so saying what, what I'm saying is like adding on an architect or whatever, you're not actually adding value. You're just adding, you're just adding. You're just adding. Ad- addition for the sake of addition is just addition. I mean, there's no less is more. Jesus. We're yeah. Mies van der Rohe, uh, or whoever that was. I think it was Mies. The, Okay. I have a question for you then. Okay. What, what is the quickest way for architects to become more valuable? That's an amazing question. You go to architectsguide2.com oh. and you build at least one of your projects. One of your projects. You go to architectsguide2.com today. You listen to, you listen to me and Al. We teach you how to become, uh, get, get your foothold in the building industry from the contractor's perspective. Sure, you got to take tests. We go, we go over all that. Oh, they're easier than the architecture test. You'll yep. They, they are. Uh, we, if you're a long-time listener, you know that. We, we pay people at the firm 
Once they pass their architecture test, then you take the contractor test. They get a bonus yep. for taking the test. We pay for the whole thing. And uh, and then you level up and you become more valuable because now you're now you're able to talk shop so much better with the blue collar guys and gals who are going to actually be out there physically building the buildings that you designed. You're going to be able to talk better shop with the developers. And then if you really want to level up, I would take Jonathan Segal's course of architect as developer mm -hmm. and do one development yourself. Then you wear all three hats. And then all of a sudden when you're in a meeting like me and Ally, where we're sitting right here today, you point around to the buildings that you developed and you are no longer and um, in competition and exactly you're no longer in competition and you're no longer a necessary evil by these look at by these developers and all of a sudden all of a sudden you are part of the team you are Value. you are valuable for the team that's how you do it i love that you had an answer for that that's honestly perfect thank you uh okay well uh nick is not in uh not, nick is not going to read for us today ah. because he's been busy with all kinds of house stuff in florida wrestling gators yeah that's He's they, uh, every every morning he sends us a TikTok and he's like, "Hey, just wrestled a gator." Yeah, that's so, his morning jujitsu. It's with gators. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And this is the truth. These are facts. So who do we have reading? <laughs> we have Adam Carolla. Basically, what we do as a society is we we get on to something and then we stay on it for a long time and then we argue over about it for a long time and then we forget about it and then it becomes I I don't know I don't have thoughts about that so we're doing that like. Right, we moved from like eggs. We started with eggs. Then we went with how many cups of coffee can you drink a day? Mm. Then it was like how many glasses of red wine can you drink a day? And now we're on trans rights. Oh. But we started with eggs. eggs. And eggs, <laughs> this, this must make Vinny insane. There was a lot of like, you can eat. Up, like, you can eat like three eggs a week. It was three a week, yeah. You can eat like three a week. But we'd kind of want you to go with the egg white Just most the egg of the time, so it'd be okay. And you'd like sit around, and these assholes would be pontificating on the TV, going, "Well, if I had a, a, a young son or a daughter, I'd, I'd like her to keep it at maybe two, have a nice bowl of oats, you know, for mm -hmm. breakfast, and some whole grain bread with some margarine on it. You know, mm -hmm. that's a healthier sure. breakfast, but a heart healthy. We did heart healthy. We got by two things." Three things. We got <laughs> by meat is murder. Mm -hmm. We got no nukes. And then we got heart healthy. Yeah. A lot of and heart healthy was on all the fucking <laughs> spreads yep. that were made of, of palm oil, oil yep. in yellow dye number seven. Mm -hmm. And it was, oh, a good heart healthy breakfast with uh, with seven grain bread with honey yeah. in it. So when you know, take that margarine and have a heart healthy. And we'd like... Those are two letters that are the same, so he must be right. And then we if the glove don't fit, oh, have a sh sandwich. Like, <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's letters, it's letters. This <laughs> Jane Fonda said no nukes, so I guess we should obliterate our our program to great power because the old <laughs> said so. Like, we are fucking nuts. We argued over <laughs> eggs for fifteen years. <laughs> so you want to know where my brain went i do so i'm gonna hopefully try to relate something totally unrelated to architecture to architecture <laughs> okay right think about the standard american diet yeah right literally remember the food pyramid remember the base was grain yeah remember grain has literally detectable amounts of carcinogens in the weed killer and all that and we're figuring out, like, maybe you shouldn't have 11 servings of grain. Like, remember, like, grain was the base. Yeah. You know, bats were evil and all that stuff. So the standard prescription that the government gave out and pushed out through, let's just say, crony capitalism. Pretty much crony capitalism. I said because yes. all the companies lobbied for them. Yep. Yep. To, and, to do this food pyramid. That's the truth. And if you didn't, it's, so we're in Longmont. Uh, Longmont had a beet factory that makes sugar. They're the ones who basically said that fat, literally made up the studies and paid the studies to say fat's bad instead of sugar's bad. Total baloney, which, which kicked off all this. Like literally just made that up by paying Harvard lawyers to say it, even though it was yeah. untrue. Yeah. So crony capitalism and the government gave us the most obese society that has ever existed. Ever on the planet. And said, this is a good way to go. And... And you need to trust us because what would happen if someone told you or put poison in your food? 
what would happen? This is for safety. And that's literally what they gave us is poisonous food. That yeah, makes us... 100%. Yep. What if the same thing's true that um, for the planning department? Mm. And the, everyone's complaining. These buildings suck. They're McDonald's. These are McDonald's buildings. These are cookie cutters. This is you not good for You hear it all the us. time from like architects. Is, uh, just the general public, actually. Ever, yes. General public and architects. Are we seeing the same mechanism? Interesting. Very interesting. That's my connection for the day. Brought to you by myself, Al Gore. I like and it. Revit Rocket Ship. And Revit Rocketship. And Rocket. Architect to Build It. Architects Guide to Architects Guide to Got Home. Check that out. Yep. All right. Very good. Uh, well, what do we got next, Al? Let's bring down the team for ARE Jeopardy. Let's do it. Question number one. What is the clearance space between the handrail and the wall? Is it A, one inch? B, three eighths inch? C, one and three eighths inch? Or D, one and a half inch? Okay, just you two. D, uh, one and a half inch. Correct. Correct. Okay. Uh, what is the minimum thickness of gypsum gypsum that is required for under stair production? You know, like if it's, you can go there. Is it A, uh, a quarter inch, B, a half inch, C, five eighths inch, inch, or D, three eighths inch? C and B, half inch is correct. Number three, which phase tends to require the largest percentage of the project design budget? Mm. A, schematic design. B, design development. C, construction documentation. D, permit documentation. C. We have C. C? The correct answer is C. That was easy. What do we got for scores? Two. two three. Ooh. Three to two. Three to two. Number four, who ultimately enforces the Americans with Disabilities Act? Is it A, the building department, B, the building inspectors, C, the P Department of Justice, D, Biden? Himself. <laughs> Himself. The first if he can get there on his bike, huh? What were the first two? Uh, the building department is A, and B, the building inspectors. Ooh, he's struggling. I saw it. Uh, A and C, the correct answer is C, the Department of Justice. Where four for four? Congratulations. Where are we going to eat? Buffalo. What Buffalo is that? Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh, okay, great. I'll let the construction guys know. Al? Uh, that's it. Go to architectsguide2.com, uh, Revit Rocket Ship. Don't forget to visit ArcCat and also check out Pella Luxury for your window needs. You got that right. If you like this episode, please share this episode with a friend, a family member, your mom, of course. We will see you next week.